Now think of it. His very purpose in coming to this earth as a servant to die and be resurrected was to release in all of us his own life. You know, Paul the Apostle spoke very much about being delivered unto death. Always bearing about the body, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. For we which live are always delivered unto death. And that word delivered in Greek is we're constantly being yielded up to or surrendered to death. In fact, he said we have the sentence of death on us. The sentence means that I've already doomed it. That thing that the flesh that comes up before it even comes up, I have already got the sentence of death against it. I live with this sentence of death over everything that's of the flesh, everything that's unlike Jesus. I have declared that I walk with the Lord and I walk with the sentence of death on everything that's unlike Christ. Everything in the flesh. He said, I die daily. I'm delivering it constantly every waking hour of the day. I'm delivering it everything that arises in my flesh to death. That the life of Jesus Christ may be birthed in me and come forth. To Paul, the cross that he took up to follow Jesus was this daily crucifixion. And I call it the final no. The final no. When that thing that you toy with, that thing that you flirt with, that thing that you justify, that thing that's always cropping up, trying to take ascendancy in your life, you look at it and say, no, that's under the sentence of death. There's no way I can serve Jesus and have this in my life. And you have your funeral. It's crucified. You take the word of God, which is the knife, and you slay it. It's a final no. No. That's it. And I'll tell you, when you give the final no and the crucifixion takes place, in floods the life of Jesus Christ. Here's Paul's secret. Delivered unto death. So that. That's the secret. Delivered unto death. So that. Oh, I'm so glad he put that in there. That word is so. It changes everything. It's the whole secret. I'm delivered unto death. I put to death everything unlike Jesus in my life. So that, or for the purpose of manifesting in my mortal physical body the life of Jesus. You're not supposed to have the life of Jesus just in your spirit, but in your physical body. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, I want a release of life in me. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. You know, he said, are you ready to die for it? Are you ready to die for it? Do you want that special grace? that I give to some that walk with me, that it's just a joy to be around. You're not having to prove anything to anybody. There's just settled peace with the Lord and His life is flowing. I said, oh Lord, I want that. Well, then you're going to die for it. That kind of life flows in and through only those who have been crucified. How do we come into this place where the life of Jesus is flowing? Paul said, mortify. That means put to death. Therefore, your members, which are upon earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with all of its affections and lust. Paul said, sin reigns unto death. In other words, the Bible also says, he that is dead is freed from sin. Now that's not just a one-time thing. You come to Jesus and then you're just dead and that's it. You're freed from sin. No, it means every time sin raises its head. Every time the flesh rises up. You do what Paul did. You die daily. You die if you have to a dozen, fifty, sixty, seventy times a day. Every time the flesh or that lust rises up, you take the knife to it. God told Abraham, said, you take your son, son that you love so much, and you take him up to the mountain. I'll tell you about. God said to Abraham, take now thine only son whom thou lovest and offer him for burnt offering. And Abraham rose up. He didn't question. If he liked a lot of Christians, he said, I can't do that. I can't do it. it. It's too much for me. This thing has a hold on me. This boy's got a hold on me. I love it so much. I can't do it. And that's what the church has been telling people now for hundreds of years. You can't do it. You don't have the will. You don't have the power. And so we turned everything over to God and said, God, I'm here waiting. He could have sat there and waited for God to give him the courage. No. He had to take the fire in his hand. He had to take a knife in his hand. And he himself had to get up and make the sacrifice. Paul the Apostle said, you mortify the fire. You cut it. You do it. That God gives the life. It's the life that is the light. But you're not going to get that life until you set your heart and your mind and said, no, a final no to it. Well, when God spoke that to my heart, I've learned that. There comes a time you look that thing right in the, that flesh in the face and say, no, final, that's it. No. And when that final no is made, the crucifixion takes place. 
Oh, what victory there is in the heart after that. Hallelujah. You know what real worship is? His people have been to the cross. They've been crucified. And there's a life flowing to me. It's a spontaneous outbreaking of the life of Jesus Christ. That's worship. That's the only thing that will please the Lord. I want the beauty of Jesus to flow in and through me. When Jesus' life is released in us, you move into rivers of pleasure. Rivers of pleasure. I'll tell you something. It's only those who've died to sin that enter into these great riches of His pleasure. Are you happy in Jesus tonight? Have you been drinking from that river of pleasure? Rivers of pleasure. Rivers of pleasure. Why? Because we're the people dying to themselves, dying to sin, dying to lust. So that the life of Jesus Christ may be manifest or released in this physical, mortal body. I want to be crucified with Christ. Now, I'm going to pray that God will release the life of Jesus in you tonight. That you will be changed. That the Christ of you will not be a Christ of no effect. That He'll have power and authority in your life. I'm inviting you to your funeral tonight. I'm inviting you to lay it, everything down once and for all. You look this thing right in the eye and say, give it at the final no right now. No, Jesus. I, it can't happen. It can't go on anymore. This has to stop. This is it. And I'll tell you what, God knows when you've given that final no, that's when the life springs up. That's where he, he moves your will. He moves on your life with such exuberant power and life. People won't even know the change. You'll, they'll see it. You don't have to tell them. The greatest witness you can ever have is the witness of his life flowing abundantly through and in, in and through you. Lord Jesus, let the light begin to flow. Ask him for that life now, Lord. That abundant life, let it flow into me. Give me the strength now to follow through the path of life.